Hi, everybody. This is Lindsay Paoli. Um, I was just here to introduce this webinar that we're about to put on. Um, and we're going to just run through a quick pro demonstration just so everybody can understand how to use the product in the classroom for your students. Um, and I wonder if we met in person down in Tulsa at the IDEC conference. Um, if we did, hello. If not, uh, we hope to meet you and talk to you a lot in the future. Um, we're working on a lot of plans to hopefully help integrate the software into your classrooms. Um, so we have the very experienced uh, Brad Martin ready to show you everything there is about the project management area of uh, Pro, Cloud, Pro Cloud here. Uh, hey, thanks, Lindsay. Uh, it sounds like you have some very excited attendees uh, watching the demonstration behind you there. Um, <laughs> Uh, folks, uh, glad that everyone is joining us today. Take a little time out on your Friday afternoon. Uh, as Lindsay said, my name is Brad Martin. I've been with the company for many years now. I'm the uh, Director of Client Experience. And we're going to run through uh, a pretty good dive onto some of the project management aspects of Design Manager, show how we get our specifications in there, how to make our projects, and go through some of the documents. Uh, any questions that you have? feel free to uh, pop them in to the uh, questions pane on your GoToWebinar panel. Lindsay will consolidate them and shoot them over to me at the end and um, we can go through those as well. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get started. So as everyone can see on my screen, I'm showing our uh, Design Manager Pro Cloud application and we've crafted uh, our Pro Cloud to be devised and divisible along the natural business lines. What do I mean by that? Well, we have areas for our project management, and here we can go into our panes where we do the managements themselves. This is where we can enter all of our projects, which is the contact information for the project, along with an entire array of customizable defaults to uh, customize how the project <clears throat> is configured based upon your business and upon your client's wishes as well. Then there's the core of the program, the project specifications themselves. This is where we go in and enter, review, and edit all the goods and services that we're buying from our vendors and reselling to our clients. We have an immensely sophisticated employee time system. We know how important employee time is, particularly in this economy and in the last few years, to all the design firms out there. So we're constantly making enhancements to uh, create easy ways to get in and log all of the, the user's time so that it can be analyzed, it can be billed properly, et cetera. From our project specifications, then we can get into all of our documentations. We can make our proposals, estimates, tear sheets, spec sheets, all from our proposal and document window. Likewise, we can make our project purchase and work orders. We even have a project delivery ticket system as well. Then we have all of our lists and glossaries. These are the various entities in Design Manager, vendors, clients, those types of things are all easily accessible as well. We further break down all of our accounting functions. This is where we can go to make our invoices for our clients. We can record all of our cash receipts, all the funds coming in. We have a tremendously sophisticated yet easy to use returns and credit system. We know how often products are returned, credited, those types of things in this industry and really make it almost like a wizard, a point and click to handle all of those tough accounting transactions very, very easily yet 100% accurately. Then we go into our accounts payable area where we enter in all the bills and expenses from our vendors. We can record our checks. We can uh, otherwise indicate payment, online payments, credit cards, et cetera. Then reconcile all of our cash checking banking accounts along with our credit card accounts. And even the vendors have their own returns and credits as well. Then we get into some higher level accounting functions, your chart of accounts, journal entries, transaction search, financial statements such as your P&L, balance sheet, etc. All handled on the accounting side of things. As Lindsay said, we're going to focus really on a lot of the project management area today. So we'll go ahead and get started there. First off, I mentioned this is where our projects window is where we go and enter in all the jobs that we're currently working on. Very straightforward, linear um, presentation of all the current projects that we have. 
let's take a look here on one of our existing projects. The lake home is one of my favorites. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this just to give us a quick sense of what's available in our project window and the, and the scope of depth that it has here. A lot of contact management information, as I said. We have the client, of course, Ms. Tesler, and all of her associated information. In Design Manager, there's a very natural hierarchy that I'll continue to refer back to. That hierarchy begins with a client, and client can have one project or they can have multiple projects. Those are the best type of clients, of course. From here, we have a variety of contact information, including a myriad of addresses. We have our billing address. Where should all of our proposals, estimates, invoices, and such be delivered? That then we also have a few other addresses. We have a site address. Could certainly be the same as the billing address, as is in this case, but obviously that could certainly be different as well. And finally, we have a shipping address. Where do all the goods and services going to be delivered? Do they come to my, uh, my company first? Do they go to a third-party shipping company, et cetera? In this case, I'm having them drop ship right to the Tesla house. As we go further down, we have some of those defaults that I was referring to, and this is just a, a tip of the iceberg of what's available. We have purchase order side mark, our purchase order designer extension, who at the company should be referred to by the vendors when they see the purchase order, prints right on the documents to, to really uh, maximize efficiency if there's any contact from the vendor or questions on their end. Client deposit percentages, uh, do you want to include sales tax in that deposit? invoice terms, and this is our time billing tier. There's up to three different tiering uh, uh, levels that, of rates and costs that can be configured on a per project basis. Again, going into that really sophisticated employee time system as well. This is just the taste of how detailed we can get. If we look a little bit farther, we can see a whole array of various configurations that can be set on a per project basis. But the best thing is, that can all be configured on a company-wide level where all that will default down to your projects and then you can customize them on a per project basis. So once you have your company template set, it automatically defaults to all the new projects. There's an area for notes and the information about the project itself. And there's a really sophisticated budgeting system as well. I could budget just on the whole project or I could even break it down by sales category or cost code as it's often referred to how much on accessories, how much on flooring and furniture, or I could combine that or exclusively budget on a location area. How much am I gonna budget uh, for the master bedroom? How much for the kitchen, et cetera? Okay, projects, fairly straightforward, contact information, tons of customizable defaults. Now, let's take a look at the specifications window themselves. This is really, as I said, the heart, the core of the application. I'm gonna go back to our Lakewood home and let's take a look. As I put in that project code, I can see very easily and very quickly all of the active items within that project. And the specification window from this view is almost like a spreadsheet view where I can see the basic amount of information, but there's a, a also a hidden wealth of information within just this little window. I can see the location of the item, the unique reference number within that project. Now notice, Design Manager can have up to 9,999 items per project. There are some software applications out there that can't have that many in the entire program, and we can do that in a single project. We have areas for specification numbers, plan numbers. There's a nice little thumbnail image of the, uh, the item in question. The description, quantity, and unit of measure. Design Manager's automatic status codes. Design Manager comes pre-configured with these status codes that mirror how an item or service is gonna move through the design process specifying awaiting client approval, need to order, ordered, et cetera. And as various activities occur on an item, Design Manager automatically changes the status for you. You do not need to go back and manually do so. Further, these are fully customizable. So the design firm can craft their status codes to mirror all the milestones that they want to follow throughout the, um, the lifetime or life cycle of the product. Then we have some more uh, status information, last proposal or estimate number, purchase order number, invoice, even tasks and reminders about the, um, the, about the product, vendor, et cetera. We can also see the same information from what I call our tree view tab. This takes the same items and yet shows it in that 
hierarchy that I was referring to before. So now we're looking at our project, the Lakewood home, all of the locations crafted within that particular um, project, and locations can be physical locations, you know, the kitchen, living room, etc. They can be conceptual locations like time, for example. Then within each location, we're seeing all of our items. And then further, items can be crafted of one or more components. So there's a very visual representation of the project itself in this nice tree view. And this is where we go to enter or edit all of our specifications. Now I can do so in a myriad of ways. I can click the add button, just start typing in all of the information onto my item window. Very common, very useful. But I also have ways to input the specifications much more rapidly. First, if I have a, a valid and, and a sizable inventory, I can use the inventory aspect of Design Manager and bring in any product that I so desire. Further, if I have goods or, or merchandise that I sell time and time again, perhaps I just change the finish or um, fabric on certain products, I can use the catalog to do the same. So I can craft my own catalog of items and easily bring them into projects. I can copy and paste projects between, I can copy and paste items, pardon me, between projects. Heck, I can even copy an entire project from one into another. But these days, users really seem to be using our a relatively new product clipping tool. How do we do that? Well, let's jump over. The product clipper is a Chrome plugin, here it is, that's going to allow me to go to any website that I desire and immediately get an image and all the necessary information that I require and bring it into the design manager's whiteboard, which you may have saw in the top left corner. Let's see how this works. I'm gonna jump over to a website here. We'll use first dibs as my example. And I have this beautiful ceramic French vase from uh, circa 1960. Again, like I said, I could easily go on there and type all of that information in, but I can use the clipping tool to make it much easier. First, I can just hover my mouse over the image and notice the little design manager icon becomes apparent. Click on that and it's gonna bring that image right into my clipping tool format. I don't need to do that manually, just click, ready to go. And now I can just bring over the information into the various fields that correspond to our item in ProCloud. So I might take over the description. I could use vendors. This is gonna be first dibs. This is, again, synchronized with my design manager, so all of my vendors are available for me. And there it is. I could bring over the cost. I could even put shipping and those types of things in. Let's see what other information is available for us here. I could use the reference number as the manufacturer's catalog number and whatever other information that I may so choose. All I have to do now is click the save option along the bottom. Check bar comes up. That means it's transferred over to my whiteboard. Let's see what happens over in our pro cloud now. As I alluded to, there's our whiteboard in the top left. This is where all of my captured images and, and items are gonna be accumulated for me. And just like that, there is our ceramic vase. And it's even indicating that this is new. This is, hasn't been included on the whiteboard before. Why? Well, we just added it in there. Now here, I can do a tons of things. Once they're on my whiteboard, I could transfer them to another user. I could put it into inventory. I could keep it here just uh, as my own personal reference. I could, as we're going to do, transfer to a project as well. So let's go ahead, click our little pencil for our edit, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in some of the additional information required to transfer into our Lakewood project. Now, I could have done some of this on uh, the Clipper itself, but very frequently I might not know precisely where this project, where this, uh, an item may be going. Oops. There's our Lakewood home. I could even put a location in. Let's 
put that into oh, family room, seeing that, perhaps dining room. Sales category, again, this is the cost code. That's going to define uh, the associated revenue and cost of goods sold accounts. When I get into the area of actually uh, recording the vendor invoice from um, first dibs and then selling it to the client, my description's coming over for me. I have the vendor already listed. There's our reference number acting as our manufacturer's catalog number, my cost, et cetera. Pretty much all of the information that I might need, I could even go ahead and put in a quantity of unit of measure as well ready to go. Click OK to save that information and now I can use the action button in the bottom right and go ahead and create that item. Design Manager is going to alert me to the fact that the item will be created. It's going to do its magic. It takes it off the whiteboard, alerts me that it has been created in the project. Do I wish to open it? Sure. And here is our item crafted very easily right from our whiteboard. Go to the product clipper, put it on the whiteboard. When I'm ready, I can commit it to the project itself. Click OK. And we'll close our whiteboard. And back in our specification, it's going to be associated with all of the other items in our project. And there it is, just that easy. So we're constantly trying to enhance the ease of use, the fluidity, let's call it, of getting our specifications into Design Manager. That seems to be the largest amount of time that it takes for a designer. The specifying process itself, getting it into the application should be as easy as possible, and that product clipping tool really allows us to do so. Regardless of the method of entry, though, this is the area that once it's in our specifications, because Design Manager is fully integrated, I don't need to enter it in other areas. I don't need to put it onto a spreadsheet to make an estimate for it or go ahead into a, another application and make a, a, a purchase order or what have you. Once it's in our specifications, I can access it throughout the software. Let's see how. So if we scoot off our specifications area, let's jump down a few buttons and go under our documents frame and let's look at our proposals and estimates. To craft or review any of our proposals and documents for a particular project, just start typing the project name, go ahead and select it. And now I'm seeing a list of all the various proposals, estimates, specification sheets, other documents that I've so far crafted for the Lakewood home. And a lot of information is available for us here as well. We can see the date, that I've created it, the name or phase I may have associated with it, a snapshot of the status of the items on that particular document, the style or document format. Again, I already mentioned specification sheets, few formats there, modern proposals, bid specifications, you name it. We'll see how many uh, different formats in a moment. The total amount of the document, and then I even have a variety of accounting information available for me here as well. How much deposit did I request it? What did I actually receive from the client? What was the most uh, recent check number associated with that deposit or other method of payment, credit card, ACH, or what have you? The date thereof, what's been invoiced to the client, the application of deposit, how much deposit is available, et cetera, et cetera. So I keep saying this, there's really a tremendous amount of information on each of these windows. If, you just take a, if we take a moment to sort of absorb it all, there's a fantastic amount of detail on each one. Now, let's go ahead and explore some of these documents so we can see all the various formats that the Design Manager has available for us. To do so, I'm going to create or add a new one, which, not surprisingly, I'll use the Add button to do so. And let's focus on our brand new nice face here. So on the new proposal window, and use that term loosely, yes, I may be making a proposal or estimate, but again, I could be making a specification sheet, tear sheet, et cetera, as we'll see. The name or phase, that defaults down from the project itself, but I'm a big fan of changing that to something a little bit more indicative of what I'm really doing here. Tear sheets for kitchen, uh, uh, specification sheets, proposal for outdoor living area, what have you. We can just use ceramic vase as our example. The date defaults to today's date, of course, that could be changed as necessary. Now, let's take a look at our style or format all of the various 
different selections you have to choose from. It's defaulting to our modern proposal. I've configured that in my company settings, so it's doing that for me automatically. That's the format that I prefer the most. It has the most contemporary view to it. But if we drop this down a bit, we can see all the various selections you may have and options you have to present to your client. There's the residential proposal, a classic sort of personal correspondence appearance to it. It has a few different varieties. I can show uh, the deposit requested on a per item basis. I can show only group prices, not individual prices. Then I have my commercial suite. That has your classic uh, grid columns, almost looks like a, a work order or purchase order itself. And again, the same options with the availability of the deposit and uh, the group prices only. Here's our modern suite, which has a few extra options. Uh, it has a no pricing. I may just wanna present the client all of my wonderful design concepts without having any prices yet. That's available. We also have our specification sheets, two formats, our classic and our modern, same with our bid specifications, and then there's our tear sheets as well. Let's take a peek here. Let's do a, a modern specification sheet first, and we're gonna focus only on our ceramic vase that we've been working on so far. To include items on our proposal or document, all we have to do is tag or select them, Just grab the ones you want, let Design Manager do the rest for us. Click OK. And let's take a peek. And here is our uh, one of the first format examples we're looking at. This is our modern specification sheet. I can see the project, the location. I can see any uh, specification number. We'll review that in a second. Uh, quantity and unit of measure, manufacturer and source, and a nice image of the ceramic vase. The description beneath it and we're not showing any pricing in this case. I did want to include another item on there. Yes, let's do our kitchen island stools as well because I did have some of the other info in there such as our spec number uh, and manufacturers. So now I have two items, one per page. Ah, there we go and now we can see we have our the project itself, the location, I'm showing the manufacturer and the source. I could put in plan numbers and those types of things. And then I have all of my information about the item along the bottom. So specification sheets, lots of uh, variety there, lots of customization and lots of formats. I'm gonna go ahead and close this print preview and I'm gonna reject it so we can see some of the other formats available for us. If I wanna go for even a greater wow of the picture itself, I may do the tear sheets. And now we're seeing a huge available image of our product, uh, very limited on the information in the sense that we're just showing the project, the location within that project, and the description itself, really showing our tear sheets to present to the client or for our own internal reference as well, but really focusing on the visual in these cases. More traditionally, we do have our various proposal formats, as I mentioned. Again, my favorite is the modern, so let's take a look at that. Now, of course, we will be focusing on pricing, at least in this format. And here we go. We use the term proposal. You can change that to estimate, contract, whatever you'd like. We can see the uh, building and site addresses in this case. Much of this information is customizable. You can present a variety of different um, aspects of the project on the document itself. We're seeing the uh, location associated with the item, the description. You can, of course, format that. You can bold, italicize, color, those types of things to really make that, uh, that description as dramatic as possible. There's a nice <clears throat> a smaller image of the, of the um, the vase in this case, quantity and unit of measure, unit and total prices. And then I have totals by location. And we can see our kitchen chairs here as well. I then have all of my subtotal of all the merchandise. I've opted to have freight being included in the total region. I could do that on a per item basis. I could blend it into the total price. You have that kind of flexibility um, and options on a, again, on a per project basis if desired, heck, on a per proposal basis. 
then I see my total deposit uh, that I'm requesting from the client, and I even have an approval signature line and date as well. And now in this case, we'll go ahead and actually accept or process that document, in this case our proposal, and boom, there it is right at the top. We can see the most recent document number, date, very conveniently I can see what's included on this particular uh, proposal, ceramic base, well, the kitchen chairs as well, the style, total amount, etc. So the ease of use of getting our specifications into the application, into our pro cloud, makes it even easier then to make all of these documents out there, make our proposal, make our tear sheet, et cetera. And you can have an unlimited amount of documents on a per item basis. It doesn't have to be included. Like our vase doesn't have to just be on a proposal. I can make a proposal and a tear sheet. I can make a proposal tear sheet and specification sheet. Whatever I need, the flexibility is in there with the design manager. And now we'll fast forward a little bit. Let's go down the design process. Uh, I would, of course, send off my proposal to my clients. They would love my vase and my chairs. Ultimately, they would probably give me some funds for that. I'm requesting uh, you know, 13882 and change. They would remit that. All of that gets done in the accounting realm, which I touched, I touched upon br uh, briefly at the beginning. All the funds coming in would go through our cash receipts. I'm going to skip over that for, uh, you know, for brevity and to keep ourselves on point here. Once I've received those funds, generally I want to continue down the design cycle and I would go into purchasing. And just like we saw on our, on our um, proposals, once we have those goods and services within our specifications, I don't need to re-enter. I can go right to making purchase orders. And you'll see a very familiar uh, viewpoint here where I'm on the purchase order window, design manager's asking for the project, I just start typing in that Lakewood home, and there we go. And now I'm seeing all the orders that I've created to my vendor in the past. And just like you can have 9,999 items in a project, you can have 9,999 proposals or documents, and you can also have 9,999 purchase orders. Essentially, unlimited amount of information available for you on a per project basis. If we want to make a new order, we can just go ahead and click Add PO. All that information is already within our specifications, and now it's available to me throughout the program. And there is our vase awaiting for purchasing. Now, of course, I might have done this online already. I may have placed the uh, physical order uh, through first dibs, but I want to use the purchase order concept to further be the liaison between tracking the order, uh, the ultimate accounting of the order, receiving the actual bill and sending payment to the vendor. On our purchase orders, I don't have to do one at a time. I could make a purchase order for every single item or component that I have within the project. Design Manager will craft them or consolidate them all together for me, and it does so by including all components with the same vendor and ship to combination on the same purchase order. So I could literally make 100 purchase orders with the click of a mouse. And here we go. This is our, again, our modern suite, uh, keeps the uh, font and um, the look overall view um, of the document itself very similar to our proposal and ultimately invoice down the road. And now we're seeing the purchase order itself, my vendor, where it's going to be shipped. I have a variety of other information that could be entered in there. I could have an estimated shipping date. I could do a, a preferred shipping method. My account with first dibs, if I had entered that in the vendor, would appear automatically for me here as well. And I'm seeing the quantity and unit of measure of the component itself, the description, the side mark. There's our reference number being used as our catalog number for us, unit and extended costs, et cetera. Just like our proposal. Once the document for the purchase order is to my satisfaction, I just go ahead and click accept and now it's recorded. Just like that, I can make my purchase orders as well. So within a few moments, I could use my product clipper, bring in a variety of different um, specifications from any number of vendors, have them on my, on my whiteboard. Quickly review, 
perhaps even confer with a colleague by transferring the, the uh, whiteboard item back and forth, everyone's happy, immediately commit them off to the project. And from there, I'm off and running. I can make all of my documents. I can make, uh, um, such as my proposals and tear sheets, I can make all of my purchase orders as well, all just with the click of a mouse. Getting into the specifications is where everything eventually <clears throat> germinates from. Now, further on the purchase orders, I said that this also acts as the intermediary, the liaison between the order and order tracking and accounting. This is where I can go to enter in any order tracking information about our vase, and I can do so one easy screen, our purchase order status window. Here I can track whatever I'd like about the order. I may just want to have in some acknowledgement information. Okay, I placed the order through first dibs. Oh, I got an email back acknowledging from the vendor. I go ahead and put the date that occurred and some sort of acknowledgement number or just via email, whatever I want to do in there. I can have uh, any historical reference in my notes. I may uh, just want to type in, use the date function there, created purchase order, was acknowledged or whatever I need to communicate. Keep a transactional history of all the tracking of the information as well. But much more detailed, I can track a wide variety of other milestones. I may want to know what's my expected ship date for this, perhaps May 1st. Um, if it, this was a, a fabric, I may want to have a sample set for me. The sample was sent. I could have. Uh, I could enter in the day that I approved it. Receiving, of course, when did I actually uh, uh, procure the merchandise of it? How much? What's the quantity being received? I can even see some of my accounting information here. Once the bill gets recorded in Design Manager, I would see the vendor invoice date and that vendor invoice number. We even have a couple user definable dates, such as we use the examples of install date and lead time. You can change those to whatever milestones you want to have recorded as well. So as much or as little order tracking information that you want to have entered all gets done through the easy and convenient purchase order status window. And this drives an entire selection of order tracking reports that's fueled by that information. And I, each firm is going to be different. Each firm may have their own threshold of what uh, order tracking information is perceived as being important to them versus the time it takes to, to enter that information. All of it can be reviewed easily using uh, reports such as the order tracking reports, along with a variety of other windows and methods as well. And finally, jumping down a little bit further through the design cycle here, uh, obviously I've made my purchase order, I'm tracking the um, the order of our vase, it's ultimately going to be received. I'll be getting some bills in from first dibs and the vendors, et cetera. All that's going to get recorded through the accounting bills and invoices area. I can then denote uh, my method of payment that I put it on my Amex, that I cut a check for it, that I pay online, all those types of things. After all that's completed, the vase comes in. It's been uh, uh, taken over to the Teslers. Of course, they love it. It's in their Lakewood home. Then I could get into the final stage of invoicing the client as well. And from here, we're back into looking at our item itself. If I want to create an invoice, I go down to the add invoice. And guess what? I just start typing in the project in question. Now I can see all of the items that I then have not yet subsequently been invoiced to the client. And there's our base. I can invoice one item, I can invoice a thousand, I could invoice on a single uh, proposal by using the proposal filter in there, I could invoice on a whole variety of means, I could uh, invoice all of my billable time with one click of a button as well. We try to make all that accounting aspects as easy as possible as well. And as I do select my items, you can see the totals are being calculated for me. If there was applicable sales tax, if I had a tax presence in this particular project, that would be calculated for me. Design Manager handles all of that. The application of deposit. We talked about how a deposit could be associated with a proposal. That's being recorded and ultimately applied to the invoice for me as well. We even allow you to put in retainers. Those are 
mm, funds that are not allocated to a per item. And if the client instructs me to use some of that retainer on the invoice, I can do that as well. And then I am ultimately calculating the balance due. There's our invoice. It's waiting for me on what we call our new tab or our posting list. I could enter as many invoices as I want. I could print out a journal or a posting list, provide that to my controller, review with my principal, make sure all the information on those invoices is accurate and desirable as, the, uh, as those individuals deem. I could <clears throat> batch one invoice or I could do a thousand. Design Manager Pro Cloud is configured and designed for high volume uh, accounting input. So we do everything in large batches. That means lots of invoices at a time if desired, lots of cash receipts, lots of bills, batching for those high volume design firms. And if I click the print post button, I'm gonna go ahead, take a look at our invoice again, modern suite, keeping that um, uniform look and appearance throughout all of our documents. And here's our invoice. As you imagine, looks very similar in format to our proposal, of course. Now we are saying invoice that is fixed. Of course, invoice is a fiscal document. And we can see the same information. I'm showing the billing address, the site address, the date of the invoice, due upon receipt was one of those project defaults that we saw at the beginning of our discussion. And then the format very similar to our modern proposal, keeping that uh, consistent throughout. See the location, the uh, description of the item, uh, an optional image, of course, quantity and unit to measure, unit price, extended prices as well. And then at the bottom of the document, we can see all of the totals, any deposit being applied for us, and the current balance due. I even have some customizable remarks that I could put on the invoice, and I could change that on a per invoice uh, basis if desired. Once everything on that invoice is to my liking, I can go ahead and accept. And this is truly processing that fiscal document. Not only is the invoice uh, a document we're going to assign to the client, of course, but it really is a fiscal transaction as well. And if I jump over to my existing tab, I can see all of the invoices that I've crafted back in history. I could reprint them from here. Or I could review payment here. I could uh, credit uh, an invoice if it was done incorrectly or it needs to get um, changed for whatever reasons as well. And after invoicing, of course, we would send that off to the client. They would once again remit payment upon those invoices. That all gets done through our cash receipts window, as I mentioned when I was discussing the concept of deposit on a proposal. I won't get into a ton of detail here, but suffice, I wanted to point out that the accounting transaction windows also have a very familiar, consistent appearance to them. So just like we saw in our invoice window where we have an area to add or create new entries, we do the same thing for our cash receipts. And we have that corresponding existing tab. That's every single cash receipt that I've recorded in history available for me here. Do I need to edit it, void it, change it, those types of things, all easily done uh, right from our cash receipt window again. And that's the same for all of our accounting windows. Same for our vendor invoices, expenses, and operating expenses window. New and existing, create all of your documents here as well. So we try to keep all of the, our windows consistent so you can breed a lot of familiarity in there and really reduce that learning curve. Now, that was a, a 45 minute freight train of information as much as I could get in there focusing really on the project aspect of Design Manager, but it is literally not the tip of the iceberg. It's the tip of the tip of the iceberg for what this application does really provide uh, to the um, serious professional large firm uh, interior designer out there. Uh, and with that, I want to open it up and see if there's any questions that, Lindsay, you may have accumulated. Actually, we don't have any questions today, Brad, um, but please feel free to email them. Um, you can reach me at Lindsay, which is L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, at designmanager.com, or you can reach out to our support team as well. Um, that's just support at designmanager.com. Um, and we're happy to set up a trial for you to also test it out um, to see how you can implement it. Um, within your classrooms. And again, we will be providing some more information later this summer for the fall semester where we'll have um, some programs outlined for you as well.
And just to uh, jump on that, Lindsay, uh, uh, also, we have um, our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc., Design Manager INC. Um, Lindsay and the, and the marketing and sales team have done an amazing job of crafting and creating an entire resource library for you. Hopefully this pulls up. That, there it goes. And you can see a, a whole wealth of information that's going to be on here for you, including a nice quick start to quick start videos that are quick short to the point a bit longer tutorials about the application and then all of our project management and accounting courses which go into greater detail as well so tons of information is available for you out there like literally thousands of hours so uh any questions or any uh, uh need or desire for deeper knowledge psh, i guarantee there's a video for it all right. Thanks again, Brad, for um, putting on the demonstration and uh, we can follow up with you as well. Um, I know there's a lot of interest in getting the um, program within uh, the interior design programs at your colleges. So uh, we will definitely be in touch. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.